Welcome to my builder, a 16 inch wingspan Das Ugly Stick. And we're getting towards the end of the build now. Um, in the last video, I put in the uh, servos for the rudder and the elevator and connected all that up, and that's running smoothly now. And now I'm moving down to the front of the, uh, to the, front of the fuselage, and I'm going to be putting in the servo um, for the uh, throttle linkage, which comes down this side. Um, and also I need to be connecting in the servo for the uh, front nose gear, the steering wheel. Um, so that's going into the front there obviously. I've got um, these flexible snakes um, which I'm going to be using. I quite like steel linkages for the um, for the, the control surfaces but when it comes down to the throttle and the um, uh, the steering wheel, the nose gear, I find these are really useful. This is um, a snake with a, a hollow end or a hollow uh, centre tube and so I can screw in a uh, threaded um, steel rod and, uh, a, a, and put a Z bend on that to connect into the servo. Um, I've also got to be cutting a slot for the switch um, and fitting the, the fuel tank. This is a uh, 16 ounce fuel tank. Um, I've just ordered a, a, a different fuel tank. On the plans uh, it says 12 ounces and I've seen other um, plans where they've said 14 to 16 and I thought well I'll put a 16 in I might as well go for as big as I can uh, and this will actually fit but I've ordered a 16 ounce and I'm going to see how um, that fits within the bay. It might give me just a little bit more room and you know this is still a hell of a a, a big tank uh, and a 14 ounce is going to be. So uh, it, the, the jury's out on what size. I mean this will work but it might be that a slightly smaller tank will be a, a little bit better. Um, I, I can't help feeling that this plane is going to be a little bit nose heavy. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of weight in the front um, not only with the, the, the slightly upgraded um, nose gear um, because it's got a, a, it's a twin twin arm rather than a single but also you know it's a big old engine that's going in the front and so I'm leaving a little bit of flexibility with the battery um, I don't want to have to add weight um, so if I can move stuff around um, that would be better the battery at the moment is planned to go into this uh, into this compartment here um, but what I've also done is I've got space here at the back of the servos Let's just move this forward a little bit here at the back of the servos and the battery will fit in there um, on the floor I can put it in some foam and just make sure it's held down firmly um, and that will shift the weight back or oh, a good um, a good eight inches e even maybe a little bit more so that's always an option if I need to uh, to distribute the weight around. I, it, it's, it's, it's always a slight concern it, it, as, as to where the centre of balance is going to end up uh, when you've got it finished and whether it will be right or not. The, the centre of balance needs to be here. Um, but we'll see how that goes and like I say I can always move this around. Um, as I've mentioned on a previous video the engine on the front is going to be mounted at a 45 degree so I'm going to have quite a big bit of cylinder sticking out this side and the muffler silencer. Um, so it might be that to balance it up I actually end up putting the battery um, on the one side or if it's here maybe putting it on the side somehow just to shift the weight over to, to that side. But we'll see how that goes um, and we've also got the the front hatch, once I've got all of this finished, the final thing to do will be to fit the wing or to put the wings in place and then to fit this finally. I've got a little bit of a, um, a cover, uh, a little bit of a, a permanent cover here to go on the front and a little bit of um, tabs under here which that will lock into. But I haven't put that on yet, I could do, um, but I think it will just make it harder for me to get into the, the, the um, the nose gear down the front here so I'm going to leave that off so I'm going to get on now and um, I think the first thing I'll do is probably um, do the linkages um, and, and get that running smoothly and then fit the tank 
Just one of the final jobs that I, I needed to do was to finish off this undercarriage. I've, um, I've shown this a few times on, on, on the videos, which is the, the front wheel assembly. Um, but this, uh, I think I've only showed it in one of the previous videos um, where it was just still a, a sheet of aluminium or a, a slice of aluminium. Um, this is 3mm uh, aluminium and um, I just got it from a local uh, metal dealer. Um, where I live it's difficult to get um, different grades and even to find out what grade it is. So I was quite lucky to get this. Um, but it did have a little bit of flex in it. And this is quite a big aeroplane, or, or well, relatively big aeroplane, heavy. Um, and I was a little bit concerned that this 3mm, if it wasn't up to uh, the job, it was going to bend. And it did flex a little bit. So what I've done is I've put in these um, cross braces. Um, I've just drilled, this is 2mm uh, stainless steel wire that's threaded at both ends. And I've drilled a 2mm hole in the, um, in the tip here by the axle and just put a bolt on the back of that and eventually I'll put a lock nut and um, some thread lock and then I've twisted them round and I've just put them through holes um, in, the, in the base here again two mil holes and I'll just um, take this off and show you how that fits this is held on by um, four mil uh, machine head um, bolts or uh, cap head bolts sorry um, and I've got captive nuts on the underside uh, we will probably put a little bit of um, uh, epoxy into the uh, onto the captive nuts when I seat them in just to make sure they they don't come out when I take this off in the future um, I mean I may, might never need to take it off but it's just um, it's just there should I need to um, for ease of, of, of transportation. So I'm almost, here we go. So look at that close up. You can see I've just, just twisted those round and threaded them through the base. And that really makes that solid. That's, it'll flex that way, but that way it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and obviously that's the way you want it because you're not really going to get much pressure on uh, that way. And all I've done here is I've folded them over, uh, pushed them through and folded the, the wire over and just, um, just press that up and just knock that flat with a, a hammer. You know, just holding it in my hand because it's quite, it's only two mil. And then because of those uh, sticking out, I've then put um, just a couple of little slots in the uh, in the plywood. This is a three mil plywood base, but I've also got the uh, the kind of the strengthener piece that I, I put in earlier, which is I think it's five or six mil. I can't remember. Um, you can see here the captive nuts aren't brilliantly located because of this triangular stock. Um, I, I I can still tighten them up a little bit. I might cut some of this balsa out just to allow them to seat properly and then if I put a bit of epoxy on that will that will hold them nicely yeah I'll probably just cut a little bit of this out just to help them seat um, but that's good to get that done and uh, and that's uh, oops, wrong way around nice solid landing gear for uh, um, some <laughs> some of those rocky landings <laughs> Right, well I'm starting to feel really excited about this now. I can see the end in sight and I think in the next couple of days I'm going to be getting um, this completed and start covering it. Um, I've just got the, the fuel tank in um, and I've put in the, um, oops, put in the, um, uh, the snakes um, for the, the throttle and uh, this one here, a little bit of balsa, is just going to stick on top of that uh, and just lock that in place with a bit of epoxy and again I've put some um, masking tape around that on this joint and also back here uh, if I just tilt that over back here just to, to, to get a better grip on that I've put the switch in um, and I've put the switch so that it's on to the rear off to the front 
you never know. I mean, it, 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 a chance in a million, but you might um, just catch that on a bit of vegetation if you, you have a problem and it might turn everything off. Highly unlikely, probably, but anyway, at least uh, if it happens, if it's to the back, then you're switching it on. Um, the other thing is always have it on the left hand side uh, if you've got your exhaust on the right hand side because the last thing you want to be doing is getting oil and fuel and fumes and everything into your switch and causing a problem with the connection. If your switch goes then you've, you've lost everything. Uh, it's always worth getting a good switch. Hopefully this is a good one. Uh, this is a Fataba switch and uh, it's got a separate connection on it so one will go to the battery and another I can use as a charging lead so I'm not undoing stuff. Um, so I've, uh, yes, I've connected up the throttle. The front end we'll have a look at in a minute. Um, I haven't connected that. I'm going to do that once the, 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 the plane's covered because I need to know the center of gravity um, as to because I can move the engine forward or backwards on the on the engine mount so obviously I can't do the linkage until I've done that. Um, the uh, front wheel gear again I haven't connected that um, I, I just I don't want to fiddle around with it now until I got it covered and I'm putting everything back in uh, for the final time so that'll get get sorted then. We'll have a look at the uh, the front end now and, um, and I'll show you how I've done the, the, the steering linkage and, uh, and put the fuel tank in and also how the engine's going to be connected. Well this isn't the easiest thing to line the camera up to, to show but I'll, I'll try my best to, um, to, to get this done without uh, getting my, my fingers in the way and, and, and obscuring the view too much. Um, I'll just prop the side of this up a little bit, put it at an angle that's probably a little bit better. Okay, so I've got my, um, my fuel tank in and um, I'm going to deconstruct this now so you can just see how I've done it. I've got a little bit of uh, balsa here which just steps in um, and that just prevents the, uh, the tank from sliding forward and making contact with um, the steering gear. Um, and also possibly causing a problem here with the um, uh, with the, the fuel tubes. So if we take that out, um, I've got the three uh, fuel tubes, which I said, the exhaust, the filler, and the engine. Um, I've only just got this one one piece of, of tubing on there now, but there's three holes in the firewall which come into the center of the engine mount. So the fuel tank will lift out. Um, See, so just a, this. This is a, a 40 cc, so I think that's 14 uh, ounces. Uh, it's slightly smaller than the one I was going to use, but it's still a good sized tank. Um, and I've I've mounted this in in foam. So I've got a piece of uh, foam up the back. I've then got these two uh, top pieces, uh, which are on top of the. Um, uh, the, the control linkages, the um, snakes, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, I've got foam under there as well. Um, so it's totally encased in foam. And then I've got about um, half an inch, maybe not quite that much. Um, I think it's, I cut it at about 12 mil, whatever that is. So it's about half an inch of foam on the bottom there. So hopefully it will reduce the vibration in the tank and, uh, and any possible foaming that m might occur um, from it being jolted around with the vibration. Now the snakes, this one is uh, simple enough, it's just glued in place, runs out the front. Uh, this one for the steering gear. Um, with the foam and holding the tank in the middle, it allows this outer sleeve just a little bit of movement um, just to because it's, uh, it's quite close. So it just wants a little bit of sideways movement. So this will be a bit fiddly to set up. I've, um, this arm on the top, you can see I've extended. I'll put some, uh, some glue on these, maybe a bit of hot glue or epoxy or something just to and shorten the bolts just so they don't come undone, or maybe a bit of Loctite. And I'm going to put it in a single bolt that I will uh, 
uh, put through the, uh, the control arm here and the, the shaft for the, the steering gear um, just to hold that in place. Now I, I always worry at this point that I don't seem to be getting a huge amount of movement on the steering gear but it's surprising how looking at some of my other planes how little you need to get a good turning circle and to be honest you know you don't want uh, too much because um, it just is a, is a hindrance um, so I'm getting quite a lot of movement there which I think will be plenty and in actual fact I probably will have to uh, be very careful to reduce it a little bit and by selecting the uh, correct hole on the servo um, on the servo arm so uh, there's the foam that's in the base I'm going to take all this out, the plastic out now, um, because as I said, I'm going to fuel proof it. Um, and then I've got this one uh, strengthener to go on the front here. Um, I've left that off until the last minute because I wanted to make sure I had easy access for doing the, uh, the, the linkage down here. I'm then going to do the front, um, sand it all up, and I think think that is it I think then we are ready to uh, to start covering it obviously everything will need a final sand well I think I've now finished the uh, the fuselage and it's ready for covering um, I've got this uh, this hatch in place now and I've had the wings fitted um, and that all fits nicely um, I've got a little bit of fine sanding still to do and maybe just the odd touch of, of filler to go in in the odd place, but probably not. Um, and I've um, uh, fuel proofed um, around the front of the, uh, uh, well, the, the firewall and certainly around the sides and just a little bit underneath. And particularly um, doing the underside where the hole is uh, for the steering gear to come out. If um, there is a fuel leak inside the compartment, it's going to be coming out of this hole at the bottom here. So to, to make sure that that's uh, fuel proofed around there is a good idea. Uh, and also the other side of the hatch. The hatch is still a little bit tight. I'm going to cover the fuselage and then I'll probably sand this a little bit and just do the final fitment before I, I cover it. Um, but I've got a, a weight in here just to hold it stable on the table. Um, you can see I've, I've fuel proofed uh, inside there. So I'm going to draw this to a close now and um, like I say a little bit of the, the final sanding perhaps and then we're ready to get this thing covered. It's getting really exciting now.